I'm racing. Okay, we're good. Um, it's all done. So, okay. So Beth did put in the um, chat if you wanted to have uh, captions that you could click that link and um, you would have that. So welcome everybody. This is day two of our three-part uh, series on research and farm labor. And today we are going to be talking about, um, well, I'm not going to be, but my colleagues, Beth Holzman and John Hendrickson are gonna be talking about um, the farm labor dashboard and giving you um, a little bit of a behind the scenes peek at what we've got there. And this is a tool that is designed um, for farmers, but also for technical assistance providers in working with farmers. Um, and when we finish up, we will have time for questions, but I believe Seth and I will be monitoring the chat as well. So if you have questions during the presentation, um, feel free to drop them in there and um, as time allows, we'll go ahead and uh, get those answered for you. So let's see, Beth, I can't advance the slides, so I don't know if I'm done now or not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there we go. There's our, there's our faces. This is only part of the team. Um, we have Aaron, who is on board here today. We have Kathleen Liang, who is on board today, and we have uh, Jason Parker, who was up yesterday and maybe taking a break today. So uh, this is our team. That is our website. Any one of us are happy to respond to um, questions, phone calls, emails, whatever. Um, we are passionate about farm labor and have spent a few years working on this issue. So, all right, Beth, I will, I guess I'm turning it over to you, eh? Yep. Um, okay, so today's session, as Mary said, is going to focus on the tools and resources available at the Farm Labor Dashboard. I'm going to start with a little bit of background, um, then I'm going to give a quick tour of the dashboard. It's going to be pretty speedy, um, and that includes um, a look at what's in the resource library. We'll have um, some time for question and answers, and hopefully some discussion at the end. Um, and I'm just going to prompt you now that um, at the end, please feel free to, um, to uh, turn on your mic and maybe your video um, to ask your questions. You can do it through the chat um, if you want, um, but if you have the bandwidth and the interest, we'd love to hear your voices and see your faces as well. Um, so I just want to start out, um, and now I am going to ask you to chair, share in the chat box um, with um, you. Why focus on labor? Um, could you, if you could just tell us what issues, challenges, or opportunities you're seeing um, from whatever part of the country and whatever um, job or um, perspective you have. We'd love to hear that. So um, don't be shy. Could, could we type in a sentence or two. Yeah, don't be shy. Um, and I guess I could even um, to get us up. So la labor issues so can end labor... the farm. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. No, you go that was ahead. a happy place to start. Yeah. <laughs> it can. They are. They are. They are big for sure. Anybody else want to chime in? We have 32 people. I bet Mary or Ruben, if we get 15 people to chime in, so. 14 more folks and Mary owes me a sandwich. Let's do it, people. We can do this. Somebody say it's expensive. <laughs> yes. It is. <laughs> Woohoo. Labor is my busy expense, both farm and construction business. So, yeah. All right. So now we have 13 more to go, and I won't be hungry. To improve conditions for farm workers, excellent and compassionate. Increase productivity, nice. It's time consuming to have a continuous turnover. Yes, and expensive as Mary said. Hard to find farm labor. Uh, big is, uh, focus on reducing absenteeism. How might we be able to do that?
to keep young people in Iowa or bring families to our small towns. Repopulate rural America, yes. All good. I'm going to um, move on, move us We on. don't have 15 people yet. Then I owe Mary a Reuben. Labor is necessary <laughs> to operate the farm. You keep counting. I'm going to move right. on with the president. You move on, Beth. Um, so here was our team's assessment as we came together from our various um, organizations and um, institutions. We were seeing that um, that that like you all noticed um, or brought out that it's a significant expense um, that for diversified and produce farms, labor costs range between, we were finding at the time between 35 and 60% of gross sales per acre. Um, and when you're looking at small and medium sized farms, um, tight profit margins, um, having uh, good labor management is really um, key to um, viability and res resilience. Um, we were finding that it um, impacts farm scale and farmer roles and also farmers satisfaction with their quality of life and their business performance. Um, uh, as people um, mentioned here, um, scarce looper pool and the seasonal nature of the work can make it really hard to find and keep um, employees and that redundancy around training can be really um, tiring for farmers. Um, a whole bunch of regulatory challenges. Um, uh, going back about five years, four or five years ago, we were seeing the Labor Department um, coming in and um, people finding themselves owing some back wages um, and also um, a lot of policy uncertainty um, associated with um, things like immigration and um, administration of programs like H2A. And perhaps the biggest and most important reason that we all came together was that farmers were telling us that they need to boost their labor management skills um, and knowledge and confidence. Um, so um, the group of people that um, Mary um, mentioned earlier all came together. Um, we've worked together on two multi-state integrated research and extension projects. Um, and um, so the research goals are um, around um, increasing um, understanding in a variety of, of um, topic areas. And the extension goals are to develop and share um, new training, education and resor education resources to help farmers become more effective labor management managers. And in both um, projects basically had the same series of um, activities. We did a bunch of interviews and focus groups and, and some survey work with farmers. There was data analysis looking at themes um, and gaps, and then all that combined um, to, in the development of tools and information products. Um, here's a, just a quick um, showing you the different organizations that have been involved. Um, so as Jason discussed in his presentation yesterday, the research phase of the project looked at how farmers identify issues in labor management. And um, he and um, Kayla grouped these topics into six major themes, which you can see here. Um, and they all um, are, are part of the puzzle of having good employees getting the work done um, in a timely way. And for each of those six, six themes, there's actually um, many more different topics and issues. There's a lot going on. I'm not gonna get into the details of this, but as um, I bet all of you know, it's both complicated and complex. Um, and that's the, com the context for how we were thinking about the tools and resources we wanted to put together in this online um, resource, which we're calling the Farm Labor Dashboard. So right now, what we have is a suite of four interactive tools. Um, we have a resource library. Um, more tools and resources are coming in the next phase of the project, which runs through um, 2022. And obviously, it's online and available 24-7, um, where farmers um, and people who work with them can access the resources. Our content focus has really been on helping farmers build um, skills, knowledge, and confidence um, to be better managers, um, to help them adopt um, effective protocols and procedures, and to address um, barriers that they encounter. Um, 
we see that it has, as Mary mentioned before, multiple uses. The farmers can access the tools anytime. Um, for those of you who are educators, um, you might be um, interested in incorporating them in your education or outreach programs. And business advisors who work one-on-one -on -one, um, with farm businesses or a farm team, um, I think also might find some of these resources helpful um, in moving your clients forward with their labor management. So um, I'm gonna uh, take you on a quick tour through each of the tools. Um, so the first one is called um, the Labor Readiness Self-Assessment. And um, basically it focuses on six areas, planning, recruiting and hiring, training and supervision, recording, record keeping, um, record keeping, taxes and insurance, performance reviews and ending employment. And um, the tool provides a summary of farmers' strengths. It identifies weak links and it suggests resources that will help them address those areas of vulnerability um, moving forward. So it um, is divided into 21 questions um, and in the six critical areas. Um, here are some examples of questions um, that, that um, people will be asked to answer and they kind of have the same structure um, and all of the questions are required. So you can kind of look at those. And based on how people answer those questions, they get a visual representation of their relative strengths and areas where they can build knowledge and skill. And in er any area where um, there's a weakness, um, they would get, um, get some recommendations for resources to build um, to move forward. And um, we tried very hard in our recommendations, um, both to go from kind of a asset based, um, both, you know, really recognizing um, their strengths that they can build on and um, the positive benefits of improving in the areas that might be seen as weak links. So here's one example. We have considered the ways that hiring employees will change our roles on the farm. Um, so if they're, uh, I doesn't show what they selected, but for example, if they answered no, um, we need more information or just starting, they'll get some recommendations for where to go. Um, and for this particular question, the recommendation talks about how learning to be an effective manager um, typically requires a mental shift in how we see ourselves. Um, it recognizes where many farmers are coming from, that they got into farming because they like the work of farming, but also brings their attention to the challenges and changes in the roles and activities that will be necessary to be an effective farm employer. Um, things like they'll be um, likely to be spending more time managing the work of others, um, teaching and help others to be productive, um, and their own time is gonna shift to doing hiring, training, record keeping and managing. Um, so, it's optimistic, uh, focuses on learning to enjoy uh, um, new roles, um, and, uh, and it sends people to specific resources. So with that, I'm gonna shift over and let um, John um, lead you through the employee cost estimator um, as he was the major um, developer of this tool. There, John. Thank you, Ron. Mute, John. Thanks, Mary. Now we can hear you. Woohoo! So this is John Hendrickson. I'm at the Center for Integrated Agricultural Systems at the University of Wisconsin. Um, so one of the big unknowns for a lot of, especially first-time employers who are considering hiring their first uh, first person to help them on their farm is what exactly is this going to cost? Um, and you know, the first thing for uh, a new employer to learn is that it's not just the hourly wage. Um, I guess this is assuming that they're going to be paying the uh, hiring above board and not just paying somebody cash under the table. So we built this employee cost estimator to help people understand the full cost of becoming an employer and hiring people on their farm. So there, uh, Mary or uh, 
Beth, you've got control of the slide, so you can advance for me. You can go ahead. So there is a tutorial video on the website that walks people through the tool in, in perhaps greater detail than I will do here today. Uh, it is also uh, true that there is both this online version of the tool that I'm gonna be showing you here, as well as an Excel version of it that you can download from, from the website as well. Okay. So, it's not just wages in terms of the full cost. You've got payroll taxes. You've got insurance, workers' compensation insurance. Perhaps you're going to be having to buy, you know, some farms have specific tools that are, you know, these are your tools, Bob or Sally, and those are yours. So you might be having to buy some additional things for your employees. You might be having, uh, providing food or providing housing for employees. You might be offering some bonuses or incentives. And there you've got the total cost. So what is that total cost? So this form is designed to walk people through that process to get to that total cost. Okay. So this is what the estimator looks like online. Uh, the first step is to name the report if you want to save it. And then you can plug in a job title for an employee position that you're wanting to hire. And then below that is a place to put the hours by month for the different positions that you might be hiring. And then there is a second tab there. So go ahead, Beth. The second tab in that section after you do the hours is wages and benefits. And this is where you start with the hourly rate and then add in all those other items that you might be providing, uh, whether it's housing or food or a retirement plan, perhaps health or other personal insurance, bonuses and gifts. Um, and a person can use those categories for, you know, for even things that maybe are different than the titles there, as long as they get all the costs in. And then below that, go ahead, Beth, is, First, there's a spot to, you can uh, do multiple employees at the same time so that you see a little button there at the very top that says add another employee. So you could add in a whole bunch of employees and do them all at once with different hours and different wages and different benefits. And then at the bottom is where you build in the other costs, federal uh, unemployment tax, um, workers' compensation, state unemployment tax, all um, social security, uh, Medicare, all those things. Now, some of these on the federal level are standardized across states. Some of them are obviously unique to states. And so this is a place where a person using this tool uh, very well may have to do some additional, some homework on their end, in particular in terms of workers' compensation. Workers' compensation programs vary widely from state to state in terms of who is required to enroll in workers' compensation and the specifics of how those costs are structured. And it can be quite challenging to figure that out on your own. Um, we encourage people in the video tutorial to contact uh, people like us, service providers who work with farmers to answer questions, or perhaps even better to contact other farmers who are already employers to find out what are, um, what, is a, what is a percentage to put in for workers' compensation in my state. You click submit. Um, and one thing I will note while we're uh, transitioning slides is that none of the data that farmers are entering into this site, whether it's the Excel spreadsheet that they download or this online tool is being collected or analyzed by anyone. It just, um, the form gets filled out. You can download and print the forms as PDFs or save them on your computer, uh, but they're not being saved on our end. So this is an example uh, where a person put in uh, one field crew person that was working um, 1,280 hours on the farm at a hourly pay rate of $10. And so their you know, base wages is 12,800, but then you build in uh, the benefits that were being offered. They were gonna be providing some food um, and a bonus or a gift and then building in the FICO, FUDA, workers' compensation, and SUDA adds in all those numbers. 
And so you have the total cost for the employee for the year. And then what I think is an extremely useful number for farmers is the labor cost per hour. Uh, this is important if you're sending crews out to do work for you. Uh, it's kind of nice to know what the fully loaded labor cost per hour that you're paying that, that crew to do, that person to do when you're sending them out to do a job. So we call it an estimator because it may, may or may not um, be completely accurate depending on how well you've done your homework in terms of some of that, those factors like workers' compensation. Um, but it does uh, provide uh, a way for a, particularly a new employer to get a sense of what the full costs are gonna be for them. Great, thanks, John. Um, so the third tool that um, is on the dashboard um, is this job description generator. Um, and basically it helps people um, both sort of professionalize and formalize um, and um, provide consistency in terms of creating job descriptions for the various positions on their farms. Um, and there's six basic steps. So the step one is that you describe this is what it looks like when you go there. You describe the, the position's overall role in the farm business. Um, and so you'll see that there's some sample language there um, that helps people get started for describing their farm. Um, and then the next step is to summarize the major responsibilities. Um, and um, it's possible to go ahead um, and do some of the, you know, some people work from the big picture and then fill in the details. And some people um, like to have all the details and from that come up with their, their big picture. So for some people, it might make sense to um, skip ahead to the next couple of se sections and then go back and complete the summary of the position. You can see I've highlighted there. Um, so right now the job description generator is really focused on produce farms and it has um, a pretty extensive list of different kinds of tasks that you can choose um, for what, what um, the tasks are that are associated with that position and the approximate percentage of the total work time. Um, and um, in this slide, you can see that any place that it had that little plus, it can open up and there are a whole bunch of sub um, subcategories of tasks that you can select from um, to create your job description. Um, the next step is to um, think through the um, qualifications and skills and experience that are required for that position. Um, and to list the wages and benefits, as well as who the person will report to. Categorize the type of position. Um, and hit submit. And when you hit submit, um, you kind of get a written, you get a job description. You can download it both as a PDF to use as is or as a Word document, so you could further edit and modify it. Um, so, um, so either way works. And again, like the job, like the estimator, um, it doesn't store work. So you need to, if, to create a new version, you would have to start over. Our fourth tool is a policy manual generator. It's a lot like the job description generator and it provides sample language um, to um, help build a policy manual which um, uh, you know, is considered an, uh, an important part of, um, of, of having a well-run farm, um, letting your employees know um, what's expected of them um, and having everybody be treated the same and fairly. Um, and um, there's a big caveat here um, about making sure that um, you um, check with your state labor department or your own attorney to make sure that the policy manual is in compliance with um, your state's um, laws and best practices. 
Um, so the policy manual generator is divided into 12 topic areas. And each topic area has several items. Um, and in each one, there's some sample language that um, to get you started. Um, um, so it gives people an idea of, of what, what to put into those um, slots. Because we found that you know, just starting with a blank um, piece of paper or a Word document could be a pretty overwhelming um, um, place to start for someone in developing their farm policy manual. Um, and you can see that there's places, there's either XXX or a blank, which indicates places where the user needs to fill in the specifics for their farm. Um, and again, you need to download and print your work. Um, and again, you get a PDF version or a Word version that you can um, further edit. Um, and the final component of the dashboard is this resource library, um, which is searchable um, using, we have this filtering factor. So you can um, search according to topic, the material type and the location um, to look for um, resources that are pertinent to what you're working on. Um, so um, if, for example, you chose from the topic of managing employees, there's multiple subtopics. You could choose supervision, and then you could decide what, what material, um, kinds of material. There's videos, there's fact sheets, there's some audio, there's, um, I think, um, maybe whole curriculum. Um, so you can choose what you're interested in looking at. And then the location is basically the four USDA regions. So that would be Northeast, um, North Central, um, South and West. Um, so the kinds of materials we have, um, there's, um, we've, we're also pointing to existing resources that are available at other online libraries, um, including the Agricultural Risk Management Library and the Beginning Farmer and Rancher Development Program um, Library, which is called farmanswers.org. And um, as I just said, because, because we recognize that different people learn in different ways, some things are covered in multiple ways. So there might be a fact sheet and a short video tutorial that essentially cover the same topics. Um, but we can imagine some people would prefer to download it and read it um, away from their screen. Other people would be much more apt to watch a video. So there's video. Um, we have some templates of things like job um, applications that people can use, download, put your logo in, um, checklists for a new employee orientation. Um, we also work to fill in some gaps. So here's an example of some um, simple fact sheets we developed to help farmers make job interviews more meaningful, um, more professional and more consistent. Um, so those are easily downloadable. Um, and if you were using the readiness assessment and your answers there indicated that you didn't have a lot of experience or a formal process for hiring process, they would refer you to these resources as things you could use um, to get you started. Um, so, um, there are also resources related to legal aspects of um, labor management, most of which were developed by our colleagues at Farm Commons. And here's a couple of examples. Um, and just to like wrap up, um, tips on using the dashboard tools. Um, so, you know, if it's your first time, use the instructional information provided with each tool, regardless of whether you're reading or watching the video. Um, take advantage of the sample language. Um, be sure to download your work. This one's really important. Um, and let us know what else is needed and would be helpful. Suggestions for your, for, for farmer ready resources are really um, quite welcome. In uh, the next phase of our work, we're going to be continuing to look at the way that labor and um, mechanization um, uh, decisions um, influence and have impacts on investments in labor equipment and machinery and to integrate um, what we're finding into education and resource materials. Um, 
Uh, we're going to be continuing to analyze skill sets farmers need um, from workers and farm characteristics um, farmer workers look for. And again, integrate all that into our education and resource materials. Um, thanks to um, funding we just found out about um, earlier this month, we're going to be able to offer um, a whole new round of farmer education later this year and in 2022, which will um, use many of these resources and um, to, to help. Um, the education is going to primarily be offered online, both in online and self-study opportunities. Um, and we're going to continue to develop and test um, tools at the dashboard. Um, so one example is to have a tool similar to the employee cost estimator to look at the um, interrelationships of mechanization and the amount of kind and kind of labor that's needed in an operation. And that is the end of our presentation. So um, I'd like to open it up to questions first. Um, and if we have time, then we can move to, I think we will, to some more broad-based discussion. So far, no questions. A lot of compliments about the tools. Can we register to get updates and taking advantage of future phases is a question Natalie asks. Absolutely. Um, so I have your contact information now. We have it now. And we will definitely use that to continue to let people know what's, what's coming and what's available. I'll throw in that if you use any tools and you have some great successes or ways you've used them and you could share those anecdotes with us, that would be helpful to us as well, including on suggestions for improving. One thing that um, John had this great idea when he was looking at his um, cost calculator tool in conversations with your employees and any of their reviews or whatnot, potentially using that information to share, um, hey, here is the cost, um, you know, and here's, here's what your hourly wage is given your you know, promo CSA, share vacation, whatever have you. And John, I won't share any further because you are here, but I don't know if you want to expand on that in any way. Yeah, the notion was that, you know, one thing that can be a struggle for any employer is motivating their employees to be, you know, productive and effective uh, and contributing to the farm. And, you know, you as, as the farm owner, you know, you're, you're living and breathing and you get it, how important it is to, to, to work and get the jobs done effectively and in a timely manner. And it could be more difficult for the, you know, an employee to, to see that. So we thought that, you know, one way that a farmer could use that, that information from the cost estimator is to share that with their employees that, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm paying you $12 an hour, uh, but you're actually costing me $16 an hour. And so <laughs> it can maybe help impress upon that employee the need for them to be uh, productive uh, when they're on the farm. Is that what you were getting at, Seth? Yeah, exactly. So um, somebody asked if we could put the dashboard website in the, ad in the chat, and so I just did. Um, so you could click on that and get to that. Thank you, John. Mary tossed about offering a disc workplace profile as part of our building effective teams. Um, that is just simply fabulous. And Mary is a great instructor. What additional tools are we considering team? Oh, back to John. Well, I just uh, would think it would be nice for, for Mary to perhaps briefly explain for those of us who don't, for those in our audience who don't know what the acronym DISC is, why don't you <laughs> briefly tell people? Well done, John. Well, um, so there, it's not really an acronym in that it doesn't actually stand, well, it does stand for something, but um, it basically is a workplace profile. It's a profile tool in the same way that Myers-Briggs, you might've taken Myers-Briggs or you might've taken Colors or, you know, there's any kind of different kind of personality assessments that are out there. This one zeroes in, um, there's a couple reasons why we like it. It zeroes in on this one specifically on the workplace environment and it helps to 
help you helps you better understand basically what are the things that motivate you and what are the things that stress you out and what kinds of people are your sort of natural allies in the workplace and what kinds of people might you have to step out of your comfort zone to work with and you know as managers we have to do that all the time and I have done this now with hundreds of farmers and it's incredibly accurate they always love doing it and it's just it's not it's not all you have to do it's necessary but it's not sufficient um but anyway so the offer i made is that if you're if you're a farmer and you want to know about uh, when we'll be offering it next, then drop your email in the chat and we'll stay in touch. Um, if you are a technical assistance provider or an extension agent and you work with farmers and you'd like to partner with us on offering it, then um, let me know that as well and we're happy to do that. So um, it's, it's a fun little piece. I don't recommend that we do it during the height of the season, but it's, um, it's a really nice sort of preparation tool going into the training season. So so there's that. And um, Beth, did you tell them about the tailgate trainings? I didn't. Why don't you, why don't you share about that? <laughs> okay. We, uh, one of the fun, well, I, I will say fun in quotations, Mark, because I might be the only one that actually thinks this is fun on the team. But um, one of the things that we'll be adding under resources is a series of sort of tailgate trainings. And um, what those will be is very short, uh, training segments that farmer managers can download and use in their own professional development to get better or with their directly with their employees. So, you know, if you're a farmer, you've got a staff meeting every Tuesday at 10 o'clock and, you know, you get some coffee and you hang out, then it's like this would be a really cool way to uh, give you some thoughtful ideas on how you might structure um, a staff training or some topics that you might want to discuss with your staff. So, and I see we have a disc fan in the audience. Awesome. Indeed. Um, we also have um, what is a job satisfaction questionnaire for ag workers, um, which, is, which is in the works. So that would be excellent if you interface with Mary or Beth and they could send it all out to everyone when you're done with that. That sounds great. So if you have ideas for training topics, if you have ideas, if you have really cool tools out there, as Seth said, if you, there are places that you use, um, let us know what they are, send us the links. Um, we're not, we would love to house those links on the dashboard with permission and proper credit, of course, but, um, you know, we just, we want to make this as useful to farmers as we can possibly make it. Hopefully down the road, we'll be able to branch out and look at uh, livestock-based farms as well, but that's kind of a different animal, so. So to speak. So to speak. <laughs> animal friendly as well. Um, and so Malcolm sent us uh, the questionnaire that they're refining, so that's excellent to Beth or techie person for that. So yeah, so all the tools will be integrated into the education that we'll be offering in the um, later this year and in 2022. Um, so we'll be providing support for farmers to, um, to learn about, um, to learn and to implement changes on their farms. Um, we also have a curriculum related to negotiation, which um, will be um, incorporated, which um, can be really helpful um, in the um, employment and management um, sphere of their work. So any other questions? Not many so far. General discussion. Or suggestions. General discussion. This is or suggestions. This is the part of the part of the session where um, I was hoping maybe some of you might um, unmute and maybe turn on your video and um, and share or um, comment. You may have to throw the Reuben up again, Seth. <laughs> We can do it. Ah, Kristen, yay. 
I'm showing my video, but I have no, I have no particular comments to make. Can you make one up? You know, you're, you're here, you made eye contact, throw a question about anything. About I am, I am interested in the, the satisfaction questionnaire. So thank you, Malcolm, for, for sharing that. Springfield Community Garden, you're on mute. If you um, want to unmute, if you have something you want to. I, I can mention just, um, which a couple of you are aware of, but we've developed an, uh, a guide to writing a farm employee manual for Massachusetts farms with a lot of guidance on the Massachusetts specific laws on that front. So that um, we're actually just putting finishing touches on the, the web version of that. We've had it in hard copy form for a while. So that'll be on our um, website by localfood.org um, in the coming week, hopefully, or two weeks at the most. So that's the one resource I have to offer. Great, thanks. Yeah, I would also say that the um, the legal guides, as you might imagine, are state specific that are on our site. So uh, you'll see some for Vermont, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, uh, Wisconsin, North Carolina. I mean, so, and the Farm Commons also has a lot of um, resources on their site for other states as well. So always a great, um, a great place to go. Hi, Mary. This is Miley, uh, Springfield Community Garden. Hello. Hi, Miley. Hi. Uh, I took your disc training about a year ago, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, we would love to talk with you more about doing that for our staff. Um, we have four farm incubators and seven full-time farmers, and then um, you know just 18 community gardens. And we'd just love to learn some more about how we can be more effective managers. Awesome. I'll be in touch. Thank you. OK. Yeah, I do. I love doing disc trainings, um, as does Seth. But Seth, I'm not going to volunteer Seth because he's um, he has a full plate right now. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. They're, they're a lot of fun, though, I agree. Kristen, can you put into the website in the chat? Um, I googled but could not get the website. Yes, I will do that. And I'll actually put the, the link to the, the future employee manual where it will be landing in a, another week or so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you got it looks like Angela put our, our website up there. Thanks, Angela. Perfect. And, you know, beyond just the scope of this, um, if you have resources that you come across that you think are really good or would be good models for us, again, we would love to know. I mean, it's, um, as Beth said, this labor stuff is uh, complex and complicated, and um, it's not going to get better anytime soon, I don't think, but it's, um, it's a nut that we all have to crack, so... Um, we would love, we are hoping that we will be able to start at some sort of a learning network or a community of practice or something around these kinds of issues. And so that maybe we don't have to reinvent all the wheels every time. So Angela's link brings us to your um, homepage. Do you want to get us, I guess, a resource for farmers? That's where you, I would find it. A learning network would be appreciated. That would be actually an interesting idea, Mary. Yeah, I'm going to put my email in the chat now so that people can reach out to me if they. Why don't you just put your home phone number in there and they can just call you at home. It'd be easier. <laughs> well, oddly enough, Seth, my home phone number is now in my email. <laughs> <laughs> Boundaries have completely eluded me this year. Exactly <laughs> gone. <so. laughs> So come on over for dinner, whatever. <laughs> oh. So, all right. Well, I'm not seeing a lot of other questions or comments, but again, as you think of these things, if you um, did send me a message and ask for more information, I will be in touch. Um, and other than that, I think, whoops. Uh, cultivating success through WSU is at Wisconsin Extension or Washington State University. 
yeah, that's obviously it. I shared this course with them last night as labor was a subject we were covering. I hope others in the course were able to join. So thank you, Candace. And you could share that dashboard too, if you wanted. And Kristen put a, a more precise link in the guy and the uh, chat, employee manuals, a generator for Massachusetts farms. Kristen, you think that's as groovy as our generator? She's gone. Oh, I know that. I'll let you judge as soon as it as soon as it goes live. Well done. <laughs> so, um, just to um, let everybody know, um, we'll be we're recording this, and um, we'll as soon as we can, we'll be posting the recording, and also the slides, and um, some you know links like the links to the buy local food website and new guide. Um, the things that have come up, we'll be posting all that and then I'll be sending that out to everyone who pre-registered so that you'll have access to it. Yeah, so previews of coming attractions. We wrap up this series tomorrow. Tomorrow we've got um, Kathleen Liang will be presenting on um, her experience. She's a member of our team and she's working in North Carolina and she'll be talk, sharing some of um, her experience and research that she's collected. And then we'll also be hearing from uh, Rachel Armstrong and Jennifer Hashley on a SARE project that they've been working on for a couple of years now on um, uh, labor pools is the best way I can describe it without getting too too detailed and too in the weeds. But um, so if you're interested in those, please come back and join us again tomorrow. Uh, we will also be recording it. We, we hope, fingers always crossed on that. And then um, these will all become part of the resources in the um, dashboard site. Not much more in the chat, thanks. And yes, others from Washington State did attend. I think you answered Natalie's question. Okay, hey, and I am okay. trying to get back to everybody who's sending me private messages about DISC. Thank you for keeping me busy. Um, if, drop your email <laughs> in the chat so that it'll be easy. It'll be a little easier for me to pull out and um, and get back to you. And so I, think, I think that's it. Yeah, I think we can wrap up. We can give you 12 minutes. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you're, you're muted, John. That's 12 minutes and no extra charge.